Welcome to the November edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. So each month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month and uh, make a video to show some of those. We also make a sheet with 21 of them that we hand out to our garden visitors. So we're going to go over some of the ones that are featured on this month's What's in Bloom for November. So uh, one of them is this plant I'm standing next to right here, which is uh, Hakia pedularis. So Hakia is an Australian genus in the Protea family. And uh, it's really wonderful shrub all the time because of these uh, gray-green leaves and kind of purple-tinged stalks. And then the way that the light catches the leaf and shows the veins uh, when it's backlit. But its flowering is really amazing, and it lasts for months in the fall and winter. And it has uh, multiple stages. So at first, the uh, developing flower cluster looks like a little cone with overlapping uh, scales on it. And then when it first starts to open, it, uh, it comes out like little purple stalks with green clubs at the end. And then those green clubs turn into little hooked over like a hairpin uh, and they turn white. And then uh, as they expand and open up, then it looks like a little Sputnik. And, uh, and at that point, the flowers in the middle of the cluster are pink and the Sputnik rays are white sticking out and then those get pink tips on them as, as they go along. So the whole process of the flower cluster developing is really extraordinary. Hakia pedularis comes from Western Australia near Perth. We have a lot of aloes here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden and aloes are widely grown in California gardens. Uh, and we tend to think of aloes as being a source of color in the winter because there are lots of species that do that. Uh, but these are primarily South African species. There are also Africa, uh, East African species and some of these bloom at other times of the year including this one. This is aloe shelpii from Ethiopia uh, in full bloom, usually in late October and uh, November. And you can see the uh, plant's rather modest size. It forms a clump of heads and then has these short branching inflorescences with red-orange flowers, making a beautiful display in the fall. Aloe shelpii from central Ethiopia. Here we have another East African aloe that blooms in the fall. This one is aloe charanganiensis. So whenever you see ensis at the end of a plant name, that means coming from. So in this case, the reference is to the Cherangani Hills in Western Kenya, not too far east of the Uganda border. Uh, that's where this comes from. So it is a uh, shrubby aloe, forms a clump of heads and uh, gets a stem, uh, not too terribly tall, but it does make a stem. And it has these beautiful branched inflorescences with red-orange flowers with a kind of a yellowish-green tip on them. Uh, very attractive, and November is its really peak of bloom. Uh, aloe cherangoniensis is not a common aloe in cultivation, but it has uh, more widely grown uh, relatives uh, from East Africa also, uh, such as aloe dawii and aloe kidongensis. Uh, and these are tetraploid aloes that are a, um, a prominent group only in East Africa, and they all form a clump of heads over time or a shrub, aloe cherangoniensis from Kenya. Next up in our East African aloe roundup is aloe lukiana. So this is an aloe relatively recently described from Uganda. It's from the far Northeast corner of Uganda, near the border of South Sudan to the North and Kenya to the East. So this is to the north of where aloe cherangoniensis, or northwest of where aloe cherangoniensis occurs. So this is a mountain aloe from not too far from the equator, and it forms a much larger rosette of unspotted leaves, unlike the other two that we've just looked at. Um, and eventually it does make a little bit of a trunk, maybe to about a meter tall uh, with age, but uh, our plants being less than 10 years old don't have a trunk yet but they do make wonderful clusters of flowers in the fall. And so you can see that each cluster has a little green cone of the buds at the top. And then as the flowers open, they peel off and hang downward and they get a little bit more yellow in them. Actually, the color of this aloe is somewhat variable. There are some plants that have a yellow flower 
and, it, and those ones have a greenish bud stage, and there are others that are more orange or red, uh, and those uh, don't have as much green in them at the bud stage, but it's variable and really beautiful and flowers really nicely in the fall months. Uh, it's new to cultivation, but uh, I think really an outstanding plant that we'll see more of in the future, aloe lucian. Here is an aloe that's not from East Africa. This is one of the South African aloes, aloe ferox. Now, normally aloe ferox is a winter bloomer and January and February, we usually see it in bloom. We have a lot of them here in the garden, but this is an exceptional clone, um, aloe ferox Halloween, the cultivar name referring to the fact that it comes into bloom around Halloween, much earlier than ferox usually does. So that's great because this is a species with a spectacular inflorescence with branches and very uh, beautiful racemes of flowers, uh, but it oftentimes blooms right in the middle of the winter when frost danger is the greatest. So we will have the plant just start to come into bloom and then a frost comes and ruins the flowers. So having it bloom early is a great advantage because we don't have to worry about frost this early in the year. Uh, ferox comes in a wide variety of colors. We have a white flowered form, a yellow flowered form, an orange flowered form, a red flowered form, bicolors. Uh, this one is an orange one, uh, but really nice to have one that blooms in October, November. Aloe Ferox Halloween. To close out our November What's in Bloom video, I wanted to point out this wonderful Puya Puya Ferruginea. So the name Ferruginea means rust colored, and that refers to the sepals of the uh, flower. So the flower itself is a green tube, but the sepals at the base of the flower are fuzzy and rust colored, and that's what gives it its name. Uh, this is from Peru. It's a very variable species that occurs in uh, the Andes, and it's really quite different from one form to another. Um, we had another form of it earlier with flowers that were much longer and more dangly and not nearly so green as this one. I really like the combination of the fuzzy rust-colored sepals and the uh, much longer green petals. Puya ferruginea from Peru. That brings us to the close of our November What's in Bloom, and we encourage you to come to the garden to see these plants for yourself if you live near enough to do so, and if you don't, well, check out our website. We have all kinds of wonderful things on our website from past What's in Bloom videos to uh, plant highlights uh, to uh, various events that take place at the garden, so check it out, the Ruth Bancroft Garden.